Hello guys and welcome back to a new tutorial about genetics in equestrian in the game. So today we're gonna have a look at how genetics actually work, how that applies to our horses in ETG and how we can actually use them in order to maximize our chances breeding a very specific code that we want. So first of all, we're going to have a look at this genetics tab of our horses. You can find it directly next to the pedigree tab. And do not get scared of all these letters. It's actually much easier than it looks like. And behind all of these letters, there are different genes that stand for a very specific thing. So basically, a lot of the horse's appearance is encoded in these uh, genes. Uh, whether it is the coat itself, the eye color, the leg markings, or also the main type, it all is included in this year, and that is what we're going to do today and explore. Okay, now having sorted that out, let's just look at the genetics tab again and the column with the appearance. Now, you're going to see that in this tab, we always have double sets that contain two different blocks with letters inside. Sometimes these letters can be the same and sometimes they are similar or completely different from each other. And every single double set represents one gene. And one gene stands basically for a specific trait in ETG. Uh, in reality, it's much more complex because genes can influence each other, but in ETG, it's mostly like that. So one of these double sets could now, for example, uh, contain the information for the eye color for horses or for a specific modification of our code. Okay, let's just have a closer look at one of the genes, one of these double sets. So as we said, they always consist out of two elements. And those elements are called alleles. An allele is basically a piece of genetic information. And we said that the gene itself uh, stands for a specific characteristic of our horse. So, for example, eye color. Now, the allele tells us how this characteristic actually is. So, if we had a uh, just one gene for the eye color and we had an allele that tells us okay uh, the eye color is supposed to be blue then this allele stands for the eye color blue now of course we have more uh, eye colors than blue so there are probably more different alleles that for example still can code for brown or for green or anything, okay? So the gene is making specific for what trait it stands for and the alleles basically say how this trait appears on the horse. Okay, so as we said, alleles tell us how a gene is expressed. But what do we do if one of the alleles on a gene says the eye color of a horse is blue and the other allele tells us, well, the color is brown. And this is when it comes to the dominance of specific alleles over another allele. So we basically have alleles that are dominant and we have genes that are recessive. So dominant alleles are basically the ones that will be expressed while recessive ones only are expressed if you have two copies of them, so that there's no other dominant allele that would, uh, well, hinder them in expressing themselves. Which is very important to know as a convention, you always spell the dominant gene with a capital letter and recessive ones with a small letter. So, for example, if we look at the A tab here, uh, at the gene with the A's here, uh, you will see a small A and a capital A. So, the capital A will be expressed uh, as an allele and the small A won't have any effect on the rest of it. 
In ETG, you can also see that the capitalized, so the dominant allele, has a darker color than the recessive allele, um, which is not really important to you, but sometimes when you have two alleles that are really dominant, it still can tell you which one of these is actually the more dominant one. So then this is the allele that's going to be expressed. So if we look at the capitalized G here now, which stands for the gray color of a horse, uh, we see that the second allele is white. And this is basically not correct because there is still a recessive allele that uh, stands for the non-gray color of the horse. So it basically does nothing to the horse, but there's still an allele for this. So this is important. Just uh, keep in mind that if you have a white block like this, this means that this is basically to be seen as a small G in this case. Okay, so I hope you know now how to tell which allele on a gene is the dominant one. So which one actually tells you about the appearance of the horse. But still, the other allele always exists. So if it comes to breeding, there's always a chance that this allele is always passed on. Because when you now breed the horse, what is basically going to happen is that the offspring will inherit for each gene inherit one of these two alleles it's random which one it is but it will definitely inherit one of these two uh, alleles so even though it might not be visible on your horse it can still be that it inherits one copy of the recessive allele to its offspring and of course, because our offspring also needs two alleles, it basically gets one allele from its father and one from its mother for each gene. And as I already said, which allele of their mother or father they get is random, but they get one from each of them. Now, don't worry if you're still a little bit unsure about all of this, because now we're gonna really dig into examples uh, which genetics a horse with specific characteristics has. And I hope here it's still gonna be more visible than just all of my genetic theory that was probably a little bit messed up, but I tried my best. So let's just start with the genetics of the coat color, which are the most complex ones, but they're also very fascinating. So I always like to, well, think of three basic colors the horse can have, in ETG at least, uh, but also more or less in real life, which is the black, the bay, and the chestnut. So, and there are two genes that are now important whether a horse is now a black a bay or a chestnut and those two genes are the agouti gene and the extension gene the extension gene says basically whether the horse has black hair or not so this means if we have at least one capitalized e in the genetics of a horse our horse will have black hair on its entire body if, because the extension and agouti gene are affecting each other, it has not a dominant copy of the agouti alleles, but it only has the recessive ones. Because what the agouti gene is doing is basically giving your horse a brown hair color which only affects the body so if a chestnut has one or two agouti alleles that are dominant uh, it won't affect it because it's already basically red but if we now have a horse that is black normally due to at least one extension allele that is dominant and we have 
in a Gucci allele that is also dominant, at least, at least one, but it can also be two because that doesn't matter, uh, the horse will keep its black hair uh, in terms of mane and tail, but the body itself will become reddish and this is going to be a bay. Alright, so the reason why these three base colors are important is because every dilution that now adds up to them basically is influenced in its, its expression by this basic color. So just as a little example, if we have a horse that has a cream gene, so that would for example make the horse a palomino or a smoky black or a buckskin, I'll come to this still later and explain it more in detail, but if we now had this on a horse, a horse with a black base and this cream dilution would look different from a horse with uh, a chestnut base and this dilution or bay horse. So that's why this is important. Okay guys, I'm sorry but I have to split this video because otherwise it will be way too long. So make sure to watch part two. It'll be directly available with the first part of this video once I have uploaded it. And in this video, we're going to have a look at every single gene a horse can have and what it does to it. So make sure to watch this after this. It should be really no problem anymore to deal with all the genetics, even though it might still seem a little bit uh, weird. But after this, I promise you, you'll have a much better understanding of it. So see you in the next video and keep up the motivation to learn about horse genetics.